All right, so we're going to be continuing our work now with infinite limits. And in this lesson, we're going to be looking specifically at vertical asymptotes and how we can look at a function analytically to tell where there will be vertical asymptotes, if any. Okay, so let's first of all get a kind of a definition and how we can do this. Now, at first, this looks potentially a little intimidating and kind of wordy, but if we break it down, uh, it's really not too bad. So, so really the main thing is this, we're, we're looking at this function here, h of x equaling f of x over g of x. And the main thing is that f and g are continuous functions. All right, so we know what that means now. And the big thing here is where it contains a value c, where x equals c. If f of c does not equal zero, so some positive or negative number does not zero, but g of c is zero, okay? Uh, then essentially what we're going to have here is a zero in the denominator and a non-zero up top, and that's going to be our vertical asymptote, okay? If we have zero over zero, that's going to be something else that will not be a vertical asymptote, but we'll, we'll get to that uh, in a little bit. Okay, so let's take a look at an example here, and you'll be asked to find values of x where there is a vertical asymptote. Okay, so let's say we have the following. We have h of x equals x squared plus 1 over x squared minus 1. And we just want to see, are there any vertical asymptotes? If so, where? Okay, so let's uh, take a look at this now algebraically. And I do have to be careful with something like this. It's very tempting to just start crossing things off, like the x squareds, uh, and maybe the 1s too, and leaving you with a negative 1. But that's not going to be possible. You can cancel common factors. And x squared is not a factor in the numerator or denominator. So one thing we can do, though, is we can factor the denominator. So let's try that. Okay, so down below here, we have x squared minus 1. And that can turn into uh, x plus 1, x minus 1. Okay, now up top in the numerator, we... It looks like potentially we can factor this, but if you try, uh, there's really nothing that you can break down to this that's going to equal x squared plus 1 when you multiply it back together. So this needs to stay like this. All right, so we have x squared plus 1 over x plus 1 times x minus 1. And again, you think, well, you know, sometimes when we factor things out, perhaps we can do some canceling now. And this one, you think maybe, right, because there's a plus 1 and a plus 1. But because this is x squared and this is x, we cannot. So we really have to leave it like this. And now uh, the benefit of it being in factored form is we can see very clearly now which x values are going to lead to zeros in the denominator. And that's really what we want to focus. So it looks like when x is negative 1, that will be a 0 here. So let's just take a look at this. If x equals negative 1, okay, and we plug this in, well, negative 1, if we square it, and then add 1 to it, uh, that's going to be 2 in the numerator. And then we know it's going to be a 0 in the denominator. So that will lead to a vertical asymptote. So at x equals negative 1, we have a vertical asymptote. Let's check out uh, this guy over here. Well, in order for this to be 0, we'd have to make that a 1, positive 1 this time. So a positive 1 makes the denominator 0. Okay, well, let's check out the numerator now. If I square the 1, that is just positive 1. If I add 1, that is also 2. Okay, so it looks now, look like now that when we have a negative 1, we have a 2 over 0. And a positive 1 for x, it's 2 over 0 as well. So this should be vertical asymptotes at those two x values. Let's check out the graph to kind of verify what we have just found. All right, and sure enough, uh, that's what the picture looks like. Good. And we could do a little analysis here, too, um, you know, before we looked at the graph in terms of knowing if, if the uh, value of this h of x function is, is approaching positive or negative infinity. Um, I won't do that on each of these angles, but that's basically when, you, when we say, okay, well, uh, just to the left of negative 1, right? So that's going to be a number uh, like negative 1.001. We square that. It's a little bigger than one. So we got a positive down here. We have a positive here. So it's going to reach positive infinity. And then we can keep doing the same thing to the right and left of a positive one and to the right of negative one. And we would have found out that uh, it is indeed approaching a positive infinity when we are uh, to the right of one 
and negative infinity when we are between uh, negative one and positive one, okay? Um, so that, that's what we handled in the last lesson. But for this one, we just want to check it out visually and verify our... All right, so let's take a look at our next example now. And same idea. We're just looking for X values that are going to create a vertical asymptote. Okay, so we have uh, H of X equals X squared plus 2X minus 8 over X squared minus 4. And we will again take a look at this analytically now. Okay, <clears throat> so... Uh, just like before, it looks like we can factor the denominator here. So we've got uh, x squared minus 4. That's going to be x plus 2 and x minus 2. And now it looks like we can factor the top, and perhaps we can do some canceling here. So x squared uh, plus 2x minus 8. That looks like it's going to be x plus 4x minus 2. We multiply those two together. Okay, so now um, that it's all factored out, looks like we actually have a cancellation here, right? We have this x minus 2 and x minus 2, which uh, shrinks this down to x plus 4 over x plus 2. Okay, but let's not forget that there was an x minus 2 down the denominator and the numerator uh, before we did the canceling. So uh, it looks definitely like something's going to be going on here with... Um, a negative 2 right here, and a positive 2 over here to make the denominator 0. So let's check these out. When x were to equal, let's go with negative 2. All right, when x equals negative 2, again, this is uh, simplified down to the following. Uh, well, if we plug in a negative 2 for x, that means we're going to get a 2, positive 2 in the numerator, and then a 0 in the denominator. So that's going to be a vertical asymptote. So we should see at x equals negative 2 a vertical asymptote. Uh, but let's check out what happens at uh, positive 2. All right. So when we have uh, x equaling positive 2, and if we go back to here or even here, what's going to happen is we're going to have a 0 in the, the numerator, right? Because if we plugged in a 0, I'm sorry, a, a 2 right here, that would be a, a 0. And then that'll be a 6 there. But that's going to make that 0. Uh, and then down below, we're going to have a 0 as well. So if we have, you know, this 2 over 0, we should have vertical asymptote. But the 0 over 0, though, that didn't come up in the rule earlier, right? It, it, the, the, it, they said specifically it's got to be a non-zero. So let's just see uh, graphically what's going on now at, that, at these two x values. Okay, so we can see here at this negative 2, we knew that. That was when we had a 2 over 0. So that's where we have our vertical asymptote. Now, when x equals positive 2, you see here, all right, notice, uh, yes, when, when it's positive 2, it's that value uh, of the function is not defined. So we have a, a hole there. But, it, but it's really uh, everywhere except for that positive 2, it is continuous. So we have a removable discontinuity, not a vertical asymptote. So that's really something to look out there. And that's, again, if the main thing here is if we have a non-zero over a zero, we got a vertical asymptote. And if we see a zero over a zero, then we're just really seeing a hole there. Okay, so as far as a vertical asymptote goes, it's really just the, the negative two. And that's how we can see it analytically. So that's essentially uh, what we're going to be looking at in our next few lessons. And we'll get more practice on this concept in class. And if you have any questions at that point, you can let me know. All right, thanks.